do all this? Do, do, you, do you deadhead wild roses? Is that how you get them to make more flowers? I guess that makes sense. And, and what about this emptiness here? Hello, friends. Uh, the growing season is well upon us. There's too many things to do out in the garden. Many hands make light work. Um, but then you also have the situation where you're waiting and waiting to direct sow things to where they're supposed to go in the garden. You want those pretty flowers that need to be direct sown after the last frost. And so you can finally put them in. And then what you get is kind of sort of a lot of nothing. So we're trying to grow zinnias down here, right? And we, we, we got things eating. See, that was the zinnia stalk there. There's one there. So like the, the zinnias that are growing up are quickly getting devoured. And then there's all sorts of other weeds that are growing up with them. So what do you do? I'm gonna let this all grow here as much as I can. That spot that we've over sown with zinnias, way too many zinnias, and we're getting nothing out of because I think that they all got eaten. Well, I'm just gonna, I got some free, free seeds, free me seeds, and I'm just gonna um, keep throwing seeds at it. Not with zinnias this time, these are dahlias with Spanish labels. And these even, um, they're not going to get. They're not going to get tall and flower anytime early in the season. It'll be later in the summer. But hopefully something will be good. And that's put in my hand, like so. And then I'm going to take them and kind of show them in. We got two packs of them. They aren't the same exact. They're same color variations, but the plants are slightly different. I think one of them's a dwarf. And this one in my hand, actually, is the dwarf. And for 50 cents with the dwarf mix, you get five seeds. Ten cents a seed. So I'm gonna put some dwarf mix here, here. And then you get back to the waiting game. Because no matter what, if you're direct sowing, you have to wait. In this case, it says uh, we should have germination in five to ten days. So if this worked out well, then in five or ten days, I should come out here and be able to see something happen. It doesn't. And because, you know, movie magic, we're going to make that happen really fast. So I'm going to stop recording now and we're going to pick it up in next weekend. Which will be 10 days. It's a week later, and we can look down here and we can see no seed lights. But you see, there's these holes where the birds have been coming down and eating up the worms and stuff. And part of me suspects that it's the birds attacking the worms that's disturbing the seed lights. There's just nothing, there's just nothing wrong. Look, there's stuff wrong. It's not the stuff we There are definite, tangible reasons why sometimes you really want to direct so your plants. A big one, um, which should never be belittled or forgotten, is the lack of transplant shock. Because when you start things inside, it's great. When you start them inside, you can control the environment in which the seedlings are growing. When those seeds properly germinate finally, then you can go and take care of them. You don't have slugs eating them. You don't have too many pests? I've always had a worry down here because when I'm really in the throes of my basement garden, we end up with a lot of um, fungus flies, fungus nets, and their larvae tend to eat a lot of my seedlings. 
that really me off. But um, you can control the environment where your seedlings are growing if you're not direct so. A big problem there though, two really huge problems are the conditions in the, the basement here are cool and not a lot of light. Like I have all these lights, I have tons of grow lights, but those grow lights are nowhere near the type of growing power as the solar radiation from the sun. And nowadays where the sun's just pushing out more and more and more solar radiation, the plants like that. We, we get burned, the plants get burned too, don't get me wrong, but they thrive and they grow with all of that. And I mean, for, for goodness sake, having your plants outside usually is lower maintenance. God has been good at watering my garden for me. I mean, the, the heavier part of summer is gonna be here soon and there'll be lots of dry days where I have to be out there practically every day watering the garden. Night. All that being said, uh, big inflated things. You can either start your seeds inside, or you can start them outside. Choice. And so the real movie magic is how after I saw nothing was growing, I went and took one of those Ajax boxes of uh, zinnia seeds I got for Father's Day, and I dumped it all over the spot. It's, it's supposed to accommodate for 25 square feet of zinnias. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll get some uh, zinnias here now. Or something. And that's the other thing. If you lack the patience to wait for those direct sown flowers to be popping up, um, yeah, you need patience as a gardener sometimes. But it's hot out, and I don't got patience to stay out here any longer if we talk about this thing. So I hope that maybe you can maintain your patience and be outside in your garden. For now, I'm going to get inside and get some nice water. God bless you. God bless your garden. Peace out, this child.